When you do outreach programs, one of the issues is, what do you leave behind? We know that our, our students and our clinicians can fix a tooth within a few hours. It takes years in order to give a community the empowerment and the resources that they need. How do we, do we as dentists who have a responsibility for access to care, how are we dealing with that? The overall mission of the Global Outreach Programs is to improve access to oral health care and change the oral health care outcomes in these communities. NYU's Global Student Outreach Programs have evolved immensely over the past 10 years. Currently we have about 9 to 10 sites. We became involved in Nepal several years ago as a result of a partnership with the Tibet Fund. So we work in a Tibetan refugee settlement. 80,000 people managed to escape Tibet and half came into Nepal. The main challenge for the Tibetan refugees in Nepal, we don't have a proper documentation. It's amazing going from just an empty shell to this intricate place that now you're gonna work in for the next week. Our clinic days look very different from what the clinic looks like on campus at NYU Dentistry. A lot of these students are participating for the clinical aspect. So when they come on outreach, they know that they're getting that one-on-one -on -one experience with faculty. You get a hundred students applying for 15 places. We do focus on the primary or emergency part of uh, what they're needed. Everything about the clinic is always go, go, go in the best way possible. And it's been very, very cool. You start at eight in the morning. And by the time you debrief at night, it's often eight at night. This week, we really encourage you to engage with each other, uh, whether it's working with faculty, staff, and residents, but also with the patient populations coming in. I just want to ask people, what are your first reactions? I'm thankful and grateful enough to stay with that. We even get the opportunity to come and, and do what we love dentistry in, in another country. The basics to what we do really have been implemented within the last 10, 11 years. Okay, wave to the other camera down there. Wave to the Over 10 years ago, the programs were very service oriented and they really focused on clinical care only. We had very little equipment. Uh, we treated no children at all. And then the next year they came and it was the same issues. We had a great idea, but we really, really needed a partner to help us put this into effect. Henry Schein stepped up. They gave us supplies and equipment for all of the trips that we took within the years. The health professional and the students entering that health profession became very important partners of ours in what has become a model for public-private partnerships. And our hope is to be able to educate future dentists who are culturally competent. The highlight for the collaboration between NYU and Henry Schein Cares 
has been the ability to conceive of an idea and actually implement it, making a difference. Henry Schein Cares has been really uh, critical to the success of the NYU College of Dentistry Global Outreach Programs, and that has been true from the beginning. The program kept evolving um, into more sophisticated ways of doing this, and our prime focus was on children. We changed our approach by working inside schools. Preventive care became the idea behind sustainability. I want to give you a sustainability. I want to think, I do it now, it's okay. I want you to think, what's gonna happen here? We hope that by seeing the same kids year after year, we're able to instill these healthier habits in them. Should I just pull all your teeth out? No! no. Why do we need our teeth? Okay, very good. So how do we keep our teeth clean? Yes. In every single school, we're going into every single classroom and giving these children oral health education. He loves to brush his teeth. He loves getting downstairs all the teeth. Oh, it kind of tickles. I'm gonna actually leave a big tube of toothpaste here in the classroom like I did last year when you were in grade two. We're bringing up children from a very young age to have healthier mouths. Excellent. Let's see, and let me know when a minute is up. Excellent. The next step was, can we collect information? So we really started rudimentary paper charting and then since 2012, we've moved on to electronic tablets just to automate it and ensure accuracy. This is so important because that enables us to measure our success in achieving that goal of improving oral health. And finally, I would say about five years ago, Rachel said, you know, these programs should deal more with public health. We should sensitize our students to public health, and this was an avenue to do it. One of our strategies is to involve students in different facets of the community experience in order that they will become socially responsible healthcare providers in their future practice. It gives the dental students an opportunity to understand what else is going on in the community that has resulted in the lack of access to care or in the need for us to be there in the first place. So the Tibetan medical system is all about the holistic view of the medical system. And it is, uh, there are many similarities. We want our students to appreciate that access to health goes far beyond the care component. One of the students actually mentioned, I had no idea why we were going to a noodle factory. And after talking to the business owner and understanding how hard it was for him to get that business license and hire people and his refugee status, he's taxed 25%. And so when you think about the financial burden that that creates for him, you start to understand why people don't set aside money for the dentist because they have all of these other factors that are influencing their ability to seek healthcare in general. Lately, although there are many uh, private uh, dentists, but uh, the cost is beyond people's, you know, uh, ability to pay the bills. It's very hard to get a job in Nepal. I think we take for granted the fact that we have um, access to healthcare, that it's so easily accessible for us. Something as simple as transportation can limit someone's access. The cost of dental treatment. There are places where we go in upstate New York where the only person who will see the people that we see is three hours away. Mm -hmm. 
We had the opportunity to travel to Plattsburgh, New York for the second year in a row to provide care in conjunction with United Healthcare. This was a really unique opportunity for dental students to see what life is like in rural America. It's an outdoorsy region. I mean, it is north of the Adirondacks. We have a lot of dental care in Plattsburgh, but it's very expensive. A lot of insurances don't have coverage for dental anymore. Clinton County average income up here is about 45000 Our job is to help veterans and their families access the resources that are available. What are the what are the resources that are the most challenging for them to access or those services that are the most healthcare. challenging? Healthcare is, is difficult. There are dental insurances out there through the Department of Veterans Affairs, but they're expensive. The amount of providers that accept Medicaid or or that offer sliding scale for people who may not be able to afford out-of-pocket dentistry, um, those, those challenges are very real in rural America. Dental is something you just push on the back burner because you don't have money to pay for it. My own experience starting as a pediatric dental resident to now being out on my ninth trip as a supervising pediatric faculty. It's incredible to see how dental students start to think from a public health perspective. Sometimes you need to come all the way out here to realize how much you can do back home. I want them to recognize that it's possible to spend your life treating vulnerable populations and to do exactly what most healthcare providers start by saying they want to do with their careers, which is to help people. I remember now why I signed up for this profession. I remember now the personal statement I wrote into dental school. I remember now what I signed up for. I remember now like what I want to do after I leave in six months. As we leave Nepal, we're already thinking of what comes next. We recently conducted a site visit to Cape Town, South Africa. We were connected with Shaco. We were trying to see if we could forge a partnership with them to create sustainable lasting change. Shoko is a student-run and student-led nonprofit organization based at the University of Cape Town. We want to see if there's an opportunity for them to come to our communities here in Cape Town and, and start an outreach program with us. Yeah. We come with a lot of questions <laughs> and, you know, we hope to put together all those pieces through this process. There are many different opportunities for intervention and really the overarching goal is to improve oral health. This week we've taken them around um, various communities in and around Cape Town. We're happy to be in your school. Thank you for welcoming us. We're hoping to learn a little bit more. If you can tell us a little bit more about, you know, your perceptions of the children's dental health or needs. The children that, that's at the school is basically very poor, very, very poor. So we struggle a lot because the clinic is not sufficient. Our children don't get that kind of help. So we really, really in need of dental care for the children. We always do a site visit to explore what's the infrastructure of the community, could it support our group and our activity, and what are the level of partnerships that may be involved, what are the learning experiences for our students, and is this a place that's um, safe and secure and appropriate for us to work. We will go back and spend time developing a program there. The biggest problem in this world of healthcare is access. The program really opened up the access to care for oral health in locations that heretofore had no chance of being served by the dental profession. Without having 
shine without having Colgate, we could not do what we wanted to do. We have to empower our students with the knowledge and the skills and the tools to make changes for the future. You really refocus and remember that this is for the people that really need it. I think a lot of the things I've learned are just how I feel about dentistry, how I feel about wanting to go out and serve and provide this skill set to others. It really opened my eyes to see that something like this not only is happening in other countries that aren't developed, but in our own backyard. This trip has taught me the fact that I can't hide away from world problems. It really opens the eyes of these dental students to give back. It's creating better lives and healthier lives. I hope to see these programs continue to transform students. We want to see more of the same continued growth, continued expansion. I'm very proud of our programs, but we have a lot more work to do. While we have achieved great success in, in many different ways, we have a long way to go, and there's always more that can be done. We want to make this world a healthier place.